Hi guys, this is Yao Kai at uh, Investing with JYK, and uh, today we'll talk about a home builder called uh, LGI Homes. Uh, I apologize for any of the clicking sound. It's my wife working beside me, so she's clicking her mouse. And um, okay, so let's get on with this. Uh, so. LGI Homes is a home builder. This is a website uh, that uh, targets first-time home buyers. Um, so their typical customer, from what I gathered, should be people that's approaching 30, so the, the proverbial millennials. Uh, so since they're getting 30, they're getting married, so moving out of the rental uh, apartments, they're moving out of their parents' homes and establishing their own households and um, so um, I would like to just uh, think about what do these people want right what are their requirements one thing is usually they don't have much money right? so they can't afford luxury homes so they want things that are cheap um, Ideally, not much more expensive than their uh, rent. Like the the mortgage is not much more expensive than the rent. Um, also, it's mortgage plus the insurance plus the uh, property tax. I would say. And uh, they want to move in fast, so you, they can cut off their rent immediately and move into their uh, their home and then start building equity there rather than uh, you know delaying that. Uh, they will start to need space and privacy because of the uh, family thing. So if they had a single kid or two kids, they would need uh, at least, uh, I would say, uh, three rooms. Um, and, uh, you know, they, they, they're done with sharing the house with, um, you know, two other families or something like that. And also something that to... Uh, keep in mind is is the uh, the bills. So once you move into a, a bigger home, uh, with a bigger space comes bigger bills in terms of water, electricity, and heating. So you, you, they necessarily these houses have to be energy efficient. Otherwise, your your summer cooling bills and winter uh, heating bills will, will go through the roof. Um, and that should also be part of their uh, buying consideration. Um, all right, and also it has to be cheap maintenance, right? So it doesn't, you can't have like really fancy uh, um, uh, things that need special maintenance. And being first-time home buyers, they probably don't know much about. Uh, all the pros and cons of all the different options. So if I ask a, a typical 30-year-old that's about to buy their first home, what is better, a hot wood floor or carpet or, you know, maybe like uh, vaulted ceilings was not, recessed lights was not, um, all that stuff. I, I think most of them will be hard-pressed to, to give you a, a, a you know, a, a thorough analysis. So these are the, the target buyers. And um, so what I did was then I went to, to uh, online and found some articles about these uh, millennials and see what they, you know, what the, the media is saying about them. So on CNBC, they're saying home builders are targeting millennials, blah, blah, blah. So that seems about nice. And see here, they actually talk about LGI homes. And then here you can see that this one is actually very interesting. Only DR Horton, which introduced their Express home line in 2014 to much criticism, and LGI homes have substantial entry level products. So basically, you uh, nationally, you only get two companies that are are um, um, basically have a large exposure to, to this market that either these guys are stupid and uh, you know they're in some market that's you know the, the, the market is so small you can only it can only sustain two two players or 
other people are reluctant into going into it. And the reason being, it will hit their margins. So basically, these homes have lower margins than luxury homes. Uh, uh, Toll Brothers, for example, might be building something that's half a million dollars. But these are 150K homes, right? So you there is just less uh, room for you to get uh, margin. And uh, in terms of rent replacement, I would like to see, you know, so basically there's a replacement uh, relationship here. So as, as rent goes up, the these guys can um, either charge higher price for their homes because, you know, if the rent is $2,300 and then your mortgage plus um, tax is $1,300, then, you know, it's almost like a no-brainer. I just pick the house. If the... Um, uh, or say the rent goes up to one thousand three hundred dollars, and I keep my total cost per month two thousand two hundred dollars. Then you are certainly more competitive, so people will stop renting and start uh, buying. So that's the the people that are buying their first time homes approaching thirty. These the millennials that people talk about, which what I'm supposed to be part of, but. I, I, I do think I behave very differently than most uh, millennials. Um, they're very price sensitive. They don't have much money, so these uh, changes in rent will, will greatly affect uh, their buying decision. So if you take a look at uh, you know fastest growing, you can see it's basically the, to the south, Houston, basically Texas, right? Uh, Texas, New Orleans, and then you got some part of Florida, and um, uh, you know parts of uh, Arizona and and Seattle. See, LGI Homes actually is exposed to quite a bit of that area, and also you want to say that oh, what are the part that are dropping? Colorado Springs is dropping. They actually have exposure to that, so this is one part, uh, one place you can you can check, and uh, they have like parts in uh, Tennessee and North Carolina and all that stuff, which doesn't show up here. They're not making the top or the bottom performers. So that's one part of it, and the other one that you might be interested to see is this report. So this is a 2016. Um, uh, rent market report and if you go down you can see that change year over year the greatest increase are in uh, these cities including Colorado Springs so that probably explains why it was dropping uh, a little bit um, in, in, in 2017 but California obviously but this LGI home has no exposure in California you got Arizona so they got Arizona and Texas Seattle, Phoenix, Arizona again, you got Las Vegas, Tampa, so that's Florida, uh, and more uh, Nevada, Texas, Florida, Texas. So you get the idea. Basically, southern part and some, some of the coastal parts, and for some reason, Colorado Springs. I don't know what's going on there. Um, right, and you can see they got the coastal areas, they got Arizona, California, they have none, and a uh, bunch of uh, um, Texas, and then you got the Florida part, right? So that means they are targeting the, the right market. So if the rent are increasing, they basically means their homes are now more attractive. So that's nice. And also, if you go back, oops, sorry, go back to here, you see the year over year change nationally is 4% and also the average rent nationally is a thousand two hundred dollars um, and uh, uh, that basically is on average how much they should be targeting for nationally for the monthly mortgage payment plus um, home in owner insurance plus the um, uh, property tax and homeowner uh, association fee, if there is any. 
So that, that gives you an idea. And also let's look at the um, uh, demographics. So this is from Lenar, which now has turned into the, the, the country's biggest home builder, I think. They purchased somebody. Let's make it bigger. So what does it say? Uh, this is in 2017, uh, right? So this is their presentation in a, um, in a JP Morgan event. Uh, so obviously they want to print a rosy picture, so keep that in mind. But what you can see is since 2009, they're just the production is just very low. So our 2017, 2016 production is basically the same as like 20 years ago, right? So, so it's very low compared to historical figures. And then if you look at, well, they obviously, they got these uh, home supply, the uh, supply numbers. So it doesn't seem excessively low to me. Um, and then it's, it's saying that it's getting very affordable and all that nice things. And this is the important graph. So this was basically saying that how many people will be buying, uh, how many people would be, be uh, buying homes? Uh, you know, the, the 35 to 44 age group, it's predicting that it will grow starting from 2017 and all the way up to 2030. So those are the basic, the children of the boomers. And um, yeah, so if this happens, that just means you got a lot of um, buying demand. But you also have to keep in mind that, yeah, you got these these millennials buying houses, but you also got the um, the boomers that are downsizing and dying so what happens to their house so that's something i would get into later but this is an important graph uh, as well so basically saying that entry-level homes should have a long way to run all right so um so one thing i did was i did a site visit so i went to their one of their uh selling places and just see how they fulfill uh, those needs, right? So ignore this picture. I was doing some random crap in Albuquerque. So we we did a trip from um, uh, from San, uh, San Francisco Bay Area, which is where I live, through Route 66, going through all these towns all the way to uh, uh, Chicago, and then coming back. So we saw a lot of things. As on the way, I also visited some of the 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 um, uh, in, essentially the, the investments that I made. So one thing, this is their air conditioner. You can see that um, this guy here is a Lennox uh, compressor. So they, the, it's in Albuquerque. So I visited their site in Albuquerque. In Albuquerque, uh, it's quite hot. So they have, they have air conditioners, uh, naturally. All right. So this stuff, I think, was a Sear, 17, Sear 16. Um, don't remember where I saw that. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I should have brought that one up. So this is ML one four XC one zero three zero two three zero A O four. Let's see what this tells us. Oh, here we go. So what is this? This is a sear 16. What is sear? Sear is the seasonally... Ah, oh, shit. I forgot what it is. Um, but... There we go. Seasonal energy efficiency ratio. Essentially, it's like an MPG for your car. So the, the higher the sear number, the, the, the more efficient your AC is. And um, according to this website, I don't know how reputable they are, but they seem to not have much of an axe to grind. They're just like service and selling people. Um, yeah, so they like service and sell things. So I, I think for them, it doesn't really matter, you know, if, if people buy high seer um, uh, 
uh, air conditioning units or lower ones. So according to them, they're saying that um, modern air conditioners have sear range from 13 all the way to like 21 to 25. Um, and it's saying that the one you probably have in your house right now is rated around eight or nine. So that's the Department of Energy minimum, right? So, so the one uh, that's installed at um, LGI Homes, it's actually a uh, 16 sear one. So that's actually fairly like fairly good. Um, the one I bought that the way I have at home, for reference, has an 18 sear, I think. But I specifically picked one that had the higher sear number. Um, so yeah, so 16 isn't bad. So they're, that's going to be helpful to, to reduce uh, their bills. I mean, the, the buyer's bills. All right. So um, yeah, and also if you look, just look at this. This is another one. So this is acwholesalers.com. They sell things all the way from like, you got 14, 16, 14, 16, right? So you can see 16 is about middle, middle of the road. Now, all right, so let's look at the next picture. So this is our home building side. You can see these are concrete slabs. Um, so concrete slabs, the uh, the benefit is that they're faster build. Um, they can be effective in preventing pests but they also might be damaged by roots. But this is Albuquerque, there's no plant, they all die. So it should be fine. Um, also, it's hard to maintain because if you need to do any maintenance under, forget about it. You have to literally like dig up your, uh, your slab. So that's gonna be very expensive, but it's really quick to construct compared to a crawl space. And these are their homes, and you can see this was one sold here, and that's a common theme. Actually, two sold, right? A common theme. You can see all these homes that even like before they're even built, they are sold. And um, I saw just like they're building two rows at the moment. Uh, these are still being built, and um, you know this one is almost constructed and it's already sold, and um, and they have some stuff and you can see this sold this is sold and it's just quite amazing like all these things are sold and then the the marketing message is very clear they want they say quick movement right and then the information center is open seven days a week so see that's fairly normal um yeah so quick movement is their main message and then you can see like all the way they have these um, signs saying quick message and and if you pay some attention here you can almost make it out Let's see if we can make it any bigger zoom new homes zero dollar down so how does this zero dollar down thing work right so uh, I think they have USDA has um, a program that guarantees for homeowners that gives them zero down and essentially they all they need to pay just a monthly payment right so and then this is like out, outside uh, fairly far away you can see these signs says you know advertising for LGI homes this is the desert sand thing in in um, Albuquerque it's fairly new but being fairly new, but when we visited, there wasn't even a website. Their ve website wasn't even uh, completed to um, to uh, to reflect uh, the new development. There was no floor plan on the website when we visited. That was uh, October, yeah, October fourteenth, right? Now there is. Um, yeah, a lot of those are already sold. It's it's quite amazing that they were able to sell all that stuff, and. Um, uh, we also got a tour of a house, so what we uh, we didn't take pictures inside because that would be quite weird. So what we found was the glasses, all the windows are double pane, so that would cut down the energy costs. The the countertop is just normal. The um, appliances were whirlpool, so 
they're not like the high-end Whirlpool ones, but it's a reputable brand. I wouldn't imagine they're having too much issue. I think the faucets were, I think they were Delta, I don't remember, uh, which is also not a reputable brand. And um, yeah, everything seemed normal. This carpeted, uh, other than the, the, the kitchen, which makes sense. Uh, and um, all the ducts seem to be at the right place. They got uh, the cables, the uh, Ethernet cables uh, in, in the right place. So yeah, I think uh, the it's it's highly functional. The whole house is highly functional and and affords a good amount of uh, privacy. And according, at least in Albuquerque, the the house is for three bedroom, uh, one story, is a thousand seventeen thousand something dollars, and uh, monthly, including everything, was like a thousand two hundred ish. Um, so that's in, that includes. In, uh, insurance, mortgage payment, um, tax, and homeowners, uh, homeowner association fees. So yeah, so that's basically on par with the rent in Albuquerque. So I would see this being fairly attractive to uh, millennials. All right, and um, and also the sales reps are they know who they're selling to. So they do tell you, uh, you know, the all-in cost. And, and then they know this is an attractive uh, proposal. Proposition, sorry. And so now this seems like a good market to be in, I think, according, you know, based on the, the demographic move shown on here. And just by thinking about what people do when they get to 30. And millennials are, as we all know, is the second largest age group compared to the boomers. Well, sorry, after the boomers. All right, so, so who are in here? According to this guy, DR uh, Horton and LGIH are in this market. So let's see what does, uh, what DR Horton says. This is very interesting. So we continue to expand our Express Home brand to address growing demand from entry-level home buyers for fo focus on uh, affordability. And then Emerald Homes are the, these are like the other end. And I think in here they said Express Homes grew like quite large. Let's see. I don't remember what this is. Yeah, I don't remember what where I found. I saw like uh, their Express Homes is also like no option. I couldn't find it, but essentially DR Horton is getting into the Express Home. Oh, sorry, it's here. Ah, actually no, they, they have options. Oh yeah, one, one more thing that I remember uh, I should have mentioned in, in, in LGI Homes. Um, as you can also read on their website, basically they offer no options. What they're saying is, basically it's a cookie cutter home, right? Everybody gets the same. You don't get to choose your own carpet color. You don't get to choose your appliances. You don't get to choose your own window. You don't get to choose, you know, your, your, um, molding or anything it's what it is and I think this is pretty good because it cuts down their their um, their construction time a lot because now you don't have to go backwards and forwards with the buyer right you just like okay here it is take it or leave it and um, it, it does speed up their thing a lot so you can see that before they even had the website set up a single row is almost completed and what they told me, the sales rep told me, I uh, don't know if uh, there is an incentive to lie here, uh, is that by November, there should be people moving in. So essentially now, there should be people living in the place that uh, we, we visited uh, in uh, mid-October. Uh, so this no option 
thing is is I think it's quite a competitive advantage. Obviously, it's also very easy to copy, um, but you know, seems up to now nobody is copying even the Express Homes. You can see they are saying that you know you can personalize. I don't know. Maybe it's it's talking about once you bought the the, the home, you can then personalize. It. I don't know, but. You get the idea. You, there's only two competitors, right? two two players in this market. All right, um, right. So talking about the no option thing and then the quick building, one thing that sticks out is that it does help their margin. Their margin is very good compared to everybody else. So I pulled up like five home builders and try to see. Uh, the the op operation numbers I'm relying on seeking alpha I think they give you the right numbers. Look at profitability, right? So if we just actually let me do this. Oh, my mouse ran out of battery. Okay, so um. Let's do this. Profitability. Right, so that's easy. Okay. So the screen gets in the same place so we can actually look at it. Okay. So this is LGI Home. You can look at their. You can see their gross profit margin is twenty six percent, twenty six and a bit, right? So AVI, AVHI, some other AV Home something, seventeen, DR Horton twenty one, KB Homes fifteen, Lenar twenty one. So you can see that they do have the highest profit margin. We can even compare this to a luxury home builder. If you look at, uh, say, Toll Brothers. Right, so that's a luxury home builder. And if you search for profit margin, they're at 19%. So that that is quite uh, telling. Right? So then you go down operating margin. So that's basically taking out SGNA, so a sales, uh, general, and administration. There are seven, uh, like almost 14. AVH Home is like four. DR Horton is 12. KB is five, 11, eight. So they have, they have the highest operating margin as well. Pre-tax margin. This is at, this sh should be almost the same as operating margin, I think. Unless they ha they do something special with their um, uh, with their uh, interest, and then you can see the return on assets is also very high. This is eleven percent. This is one eight two five four high. So very high return on assets. Return on equity. Return on equity is basically return on asset times uh, leverage, right? So so that it will be. Uh, so this tells this basically tells you that return on equity. Uh, LGI Homes is levered up maybe two to one, uh, and and AVI, a, AVHI is actually levered up a little bit more, le a little bit less than two to one, it's like three I would say. This was a two. This one is like two point something. So they're not levered super high. So it's like two point a bit. But you can see that. ROE is much higher than everybody else. You're at twenties. That's some crazy high ROE in home building. Um, to give you an idea, maybe the ROE of uh, a, manu a general manufacturer like GE, GE might be at uh, I would say like eleven. Let's see. I know GE is now like a laughing stock, but they should still have fairly reasonable ROEs. Ah, oh, whoops. Uh, 10. And that's levered up 4x actually. They have a sh shit ton of debt. 
Um, right. So that uh, the other thing that's uh, interesting is the asset to turnover ratio. That basically means how quickly do they, how much do they sell compared to their asset. So if they build their homes more quickly and sell them more quickly, the asset turnover ratio should be high. So this is a one point. So one percent. That means they sell one percent of the asset. Asset turnover ratio will be low for home builders generally because you got land, you're gonna pre-purchase land and all that. Uh, so here. Um, and inventory is, is going to be a huge part of their their um, uh, asset. So you got uh, one. Ah, uh, D. D. R. Horton slightly higher. K. B. Lenar, Toll. Right. So it's got highest gross profit margin, highest operating margin, highest pre-tax margin, highest R. O. E. Highest R. O. A. And very high. Like the second highest amount, what we checked um, in uh, uh, in asset turnover, and these are a reputable home builder. I'm not picking like the low achievers here, so that's nice. And um, then let's look at uh, valuation. So is it? I mean, a, a company can be very good and still be a lousy investment if it's selling at really expensive um, uh, valuations. So let's look at the valuation here. I think. I mean, you could just look at here, and that's, I suppose, right? PB is somewhat high, three. So that's fairly high for a uh, home builder. PE is 15. And then here is the interesting thing, the PEG. PEG 0.27, that's extremely low. So PEG comes from uh, this concept of like press, price earning to growth ratio. And I think it's popularized by Peter Lynch, and he basically said if you find anything under one, that should be a good deal. Um, so this is extremely low, and that's actually how I found this company by looking at uh, PEG, and he was it was very low, so I checked it. I think I picked it up in uh, December last year, and then I added since. Um, and the other number to pay attention to is EV to EBITDA. 10 is reasonable, it's not very low, um, but then we can do a comparison. Uh, so a low EV to EBITDA, of maybe, I don't know, retail now probably has really low, like say American Eagle Outfitters may have EV to EBITDA at like four. Um, right. So this basically is a, a measure of earning power versus enterprise value B. Enterprise value, uh, for those who don't know, is the um, market cap minus cash on hand plus debt. So that means if I would acquire the entire business, how much cash should I outlay, right? So if I want to acquire the entire thing and absorb a bit of all its debts, that means I have to pay cash for the debt but I get the cash on hand as a as part of the deal. That's uh, enterprise value. It's some people argue it's a better uh, um, it's a better measure than market cap, at least uh, in the in the eye of an acquirer. Uh, I tend to agree, but you know you can have your own opinions, and if you're interested, you can uh, look up look up that uh, concept. So let's compare to you know others All right so now I have messed up the alignment but just remember we're looking at 15 PE 0.27 PEG and um, 3 PB ish and AV homes very low PB very high PE they're just not very profitable because uh, look at the pre-tax margin it's, it's crazy low and then asset turnover ratio is very low this is like one of the lower quality businesses and for some reason their EV EBITDA is even high that just means they, have, they probably just have more debt DR Horton similar EV EBITDA 17 compared to LGI is 15 PEG 0.95 compared to 2.0.27 PB is like 2 point something so it's slightly cheaper uh, in terms of PB but they're less profitable compared to uh, LGI given the same asset which 
kind of mean they should deserve a lower PB. KB even less profitable compared uh, it's uh, compared to DR DR Horton, which means they get a lower PB, but their PE is still much higher. Their PEG is lower, and their EV to EBITDA is actually higher again, so it's actually more expensive in overall to um, LGI Homes. Lenar, you're looking at 17 here. PEG is empty, that's probably because they're actually shrinking. And slightly, you know, less than 2 PB and 12 EV EBITDA. So EV EBITDA wise, they're still more expensive and they're less profitable, obviously. Same here with the Toll Brothers. Uh, let's start with PE 17, PG 0.64, less than 2 PB, and 18 P EV over beta. So overall, we could say that uh, the LGI Homes is actually one of the cheaper stocks if you look at any metrics other than PB to all the home builders. They're growing. Well, we haven't gone to the growth yet, but we can look at it. Growth is actually through the roof. You can see last quarter, their net income grew 73%. Uh, That's insane numbers. They, this cannot be sustainable, otherwise you take over the world. And, um, oops, sorry. I should go back, yeah. And then the revenue is growing 70%. It's just crazy numbers, but um, to to see their trajectory, we can go to here, which is a data service that I paid for. It's called uh, Old School Value, gives you some nice stuff. So we can look at financials and income statement. If you look at the revenue, I think they did a uh, um, well. One of this year's, I don't remember which, they did a equity raise, so they actually got a cash infusion. Uh, let's figure out where that is. I think shareholders equity somewhere. Come on. Yeah, here is the cash raise. You can see the equity actually uh, went up like to. So we can ignore everything. In 2012, this is the equity raise is probably the IPO event. I don't remember, um, but yeah, 2013 we can look at 2013 forwards, right? 160, so that's a double. That's almost a double. That's 200 million more. TTM is in 200 million more. So that's growing really, really quickly. And if you just look at the percentage change, right? So it's like they grew by 30 percent. If you go to uh, quarterly, it went, let's go back a little bit. This thing is not very seasonal. It's a little bit of seasonality, but it's not very seasonal. But you can see this is growing fairly steadily. All right, 100 million per quarter, 200 million per quarter. This month was especially low, because I remember they were talking about they didn't have enough inventory to sell. And then it came back with a vengeance. It's almost like a pent-up demand because they couldn't have enough things to sell. That's all nice signs. And um, yeah, so that's uh, their growth in terms of revenue. If you look at income, it's probably the last line, which is why it's called the bottom line. So here is the, that's the drop, right? That's the one that where they, they couldn't have enough to thing to sell. So let's go back a few quarters. Okay, go to um, 2013 for you. So that's looking at like, um, somewhere around 30 cents. So it went from 40 cents to now you're looking at 70 cents. All right, now you're looking at $1. And then now you're looking at almost approaching $2. And if you smooth that out by looking at annual ones, you can see the, here's the equity raise, right? So obviously it's going to go lower because you got a much higher equity, higher share count. 
but just one year it went back it went all the way back up 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 crazy growth I don't think this thing can sustain but it's not selling that expensively right so it's looking at 15 times earnings and that's trailing 12 months it's not even the uh, uh, the um, expected earnings so so that's very cheap and last step let's think about um, risks what is the risk of LGI home one way you can get the risk is just by reading their 10k so risk factors Right. So it says blah 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 continue uh, additional tightening. So that's the main thing I risk I, I worry about. The rest, they're saying like the land and lot inventory, that's that's you know, that's the risk every almost anyone that takes inventory would bear and then they talk about all the stuff and then you can uh, read this uh, if you're interested. But the main thing is how do people buy homes? They don't pay cash. So if they cannot get the financing they need they will not buy home that's that's just a fact if you don't get a mortgage you won't buy a home i would say very 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 few people can can come up with the 17 you know a thousand sorry 170,000 dollars 150,000 dollars on the mark they need the loan so when will that happen that means if the credit start contracting uh it's either during a uh you know either the uh Fed keeps increasing the rate to a point, um, or that you get economic, you get in a recession. In a recession, all the banks stops lending, which means they, they, they you get a credit crunch. So that means all these home builders will be in deep, deep water. They just they just can't sell their stuff, and then not only can't they sell their stuff, they have to pay the interest on the the home they build and the land that they acquired. And one important thing is that the way they account their stuff is they capitalize their interest into the um, their interest expense into the houses that they built. So you know the, the in a way their homes basically get more expensive. Or the other another way of thinking about it is that they just have to take a, a lower um, margin. So that will significantly cut into their margin. I bet these guys get like paid maybe like eight to ten percent a year. Oh and uh so yeah so there I think that's the main risk investing in here. So you have to be very careful about the macro uh trends. Uh there's one more thing I'd like to show before we end. It's the key met key stats. All right. So there are something that's really good and it's also related to the risk. So PE you can see the PE actually you know, went lower, 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 and then higher. I was very lucky. I bought at the end of 2016, and when the P was like eight, it was just ridiculous. Um, and then EV EBITDA was very low as well. But uh, the main thing I wanted to tell you here is ROE is growing. This drop is when they did the equity raise, but ever since then, ROE has been growing. ROA is not growing. So that just means a lot of that's debt. So this is higher debt. Uh, this is very high. You know, they just have less things to manage. I think it could be the case we will eventually go up more close to that. ROIC, it's growing. So that's our return on invested capital. So that's actually growing. And uh, the other thing that's interesting is here the uh, asset turnover it, it, uh, oops sorry it went much lower in the after the IPO obviously because you know suddenly you get more asset but that's been growing slowly and uh, SGNA is declining so that's good so those are basically what you know, what's known as overhead right so how much money do you spend to manage your company like all the accounting or the corporate uh, administration and all that stuff. How much do you spend compared to um, your your revenues? That's declining, so that's very nice. And this is one of the risks that I was looking at. I'm not quite sure what to make of it, but you can see the days inventory outstandings greater. So the, the average 
age and also the average age of inventory is growing. But again, if you look at sales outstanding, uh, well, that's basically just how, 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 how long it takes to collect the money, which is fairly low, it's like 10 days. Um, but one thing I was looking at is inventory turnover started going lower. And, um, but the, the one thing that's all right-ish is since um, the uh, IPO, their inventory to revenue ratio hasn't changed much. So basically, the, as their revenue grow, grew, their inventory grew, which kind of makes sense. Yeah, so that's the one thing you have to keep in mind. If their average age keeps increasing, the, you have to pay interest on this. 400 days means you're paying almost like 10% the cost because uh, you, you're borrowing money. They, the LGI Homes is borrowing money to, to build these things. Okay, so overall, I think LGI Homes is still a good uh, investment. Um, I have added uh, my own... Sh I, I hold it. And I think a fair valuation is probably like a 20... Uh, like a 20 p ratio and uh, EV EBITDA to something like 14 in line with more in line with uh, like a DR Horton. Sorry, DR Horton is also 10. Um, so I was thinking something else. 12, 40, something like that. Um, their EBITDA should be growing pre uh, pretty quickly and then their earnings also growing, growing pretty quickly. So even if they the, the valuation does not increase, just relying on the growth of the company should uh, get us close to 20 or more than 20% a year. Uh, yeah. And I think the growth is here. Last year is 42%. Let's say it doesn't do 42%, 20%, and then you will still get 20% a year, um, keeping the, all the valuation the same. All right, thank you very much. And this has been an especially long video. I will try to keep these shorter next time.